everybody. Again, my name is Robin. I will be your front of house representative for today. I use she and they pronouns. I will uh, be in the chat answering any technical questions that you have. I am a white person. I have long uh, curly hair. I'm sitting in a room that with a corner wall behind me. I'm also wearing wire rim glasses. I have to my left a painting of a dusky desert setting and to my right an illustration of a bright warm sunny room. Uh, if you would like captions for tonight's program, um, there is at the bottom of your screen a small button that has a C and a C on it and you can hit that and either view full transcript and it will appear along the side of your screen or uh, show subtitle and they'll appear along the bottom of your screen. Uh, um, let's see, yes, I'll also be posting more detailed directions to that in the chat shortly, so if you're feeling a little lost, no worries, uh, there will be directions. I'd like everyone to note that there will be some inset captions to video feeds that the artist is sharing throughout the program, and so if your live captions are overlapping those captions, in that same spot of that CC, you can select um, subtitle options, I believe it says, and uh, that will allow you to edit where and how big your subtitles are. We ask everybody to mute their microphones, please. And if you do not need to interact with our interpreters tonight, please turn off your video. Uh, and I'd like to remind anyone who's uh, just uh, entered from the waiting room. Uh, I'd like to remind you that again, this meeting is being recorded. And so if you want to be anonymous, change your name to Anon. Um, since I'm here for tech support, you can contact me again in the chat. Or if you're having difficulties with Zoom, you can email me at info at passmarai.on.ca or you can call me at 416-504 seven five two nine and I will put that in the chat shortly um, I will be turning off my camera throughout the show but I will still be here uh, if you get kicked out of the zoom call please do call me and I'll uh, support you in getting back in that is everything that I have to say for now so I'm going to pass it off uh, to uh, Marjorie Indrit to uh, kick off the show Great. Thank you so much, Robin. I think we also want to invite Rinchen Doma, who is the uh, producer of the Digital Creators Lab. So if we could invite her as well. Mm. Rinchen? Yes. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this lovely Saturday afternoon uh, for our second workshop as part of our Digital Creators Lab workshop series this month. It is part of the larger digital uh, transformation project that is happening at Theatre Pass Marai. Uh, like Marjorie just mentioned, my name is Rinchen Doma. I am the Digital Creators Lab producer. Uh, I'm a Himalayan woman. I have long black hair uh, with a black t-shirt on and my background is a little messy, but I have, I'm just in a, in a, in an office with a whiteboard and some shelves behind me. Um, I am really looking forward to today's workshop. Uh, we had a lovely workshop um, the other week with Sharon Clark, who is uh, part of the Ruckus Collective. And so this series is inviting our digital um, advisors who are gonna be working with us in this lab um, I'm going to pass on a little. I'm going to pass it on to Marjorie and Inter to speak a bit more uh, about uh, the project at large. Um, but first, I'd like to invite Indrid to lead us in a uh, in a land acknowledgement. Thanks, Rinchen. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Indrid. My pronouns are he and him. Uh, I'm a Caucasian man with a black beard. I'm currently wearing a black t-shirt and a dark blue cap. I have a blurry background behind me. Um, I'm going to invite us all to find wherever you are right now in your space, a way to have some contact with the floor. If you're, if you want to take your shoes off, you can do that. 
um, or you can keep your shoes on too, it's totally fine. But just a way that you can uh, touch whatever floor it is under you right now. You can also sit on it if you feel like. And uh, close your eyes. And I just want us to take two beautiful big breaths together, even though we're apart digitally, um, or maybe not close geographically, we are close because we're in the same digital space right now. And just a reminder that underneath that floor that we have, there is there are walls and uh, maybe other floors, or maybe there's a basement, and that uh, whatever structure we're in ends up connecting us to the underground, to the floor, to the earth, and that earth <coughs> is a sphere that somehow connects and binds us all together. And um, you can open your eyes now if you want. Um, I wanted to acknowledge where I am and where I'm uh, uh, entering this room today from. Uh, I'm uh, in Takaranto, um, which is Treaty 13 territory. And I wanted to acknowledge the uh, original caretakers of this land, uh, which is the Haudenosaunee. the Anishinaabe, Wendat, and the Mississaugas of the Credit, as well as all of the other nations that uh, might, and whose names we might have lost due to colonial history. And also an acknowledgement of the fact that we are connected and bound by technology right now. And so there's probably internet waves that are going up into the sky and coming back down on earth. And uh, we acknowledge the energy that is required for this technology to function, uh, energy which sometimes um, is, uh, can cause barriers for other communities uh, and so the privilege for us to have access to this technology is an acknowledgement I want to bring in today. I'm going to pass it on to Marjorie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Marjorie. I'm an Asian woman, uh, middle-aged Asian woman with kind of a honey blonde dyed hair, pandemic dye, as I'm calling it. I'm in my living room, which has better internet for doing a big Zoom call um, that is quite cluttered. It has a chandelier, it has both fake and real plants behind me, as well as a TV and bookshelves. Um, I'm so excited to be able to kind of really dig into what we're calling the Digital Transformation Project at Theatre Press Mirai. And that may, the digital kind of might narrow that in, in some sense, but just to really um, consider like, you know, the pandemic has been, ha has definitely been a thing. Um, and, and, and just to continue to recognize that there's so much uh, innovation um, and, and creative thinking that has come out of the pandemic. And, and this particular project is one of them. It's in two big components. One component is the renovation of our beloved backspace at Theater Pass Mirai in order to better support uh, digital processes, immersive processes, filming, streaming, all of those things. And that we do have a coordinator, a production manager, quite um, quite uh, beloved here in Toronto named Carissa Wilcox, who's, who's managing that project for us. I think, you know, for the community, what we're trying to offer is a much more flexible space and as well access to, access to that space and that technology. The other side of it, uh, the Digital Creators Lab, which you're here kind of now a part of, is that in addition to supporting the infrastructure, we also want to make sure that now that we're diving into these technologies, now that we're finding new vocabulary for the way that we're making theater and, and, and how that's been inspired um, throughout this pandemic, but we want to make sure that uh, the artists uh, also have that capacity. So we're doing so with these workshops, as we mentioned, we're also having a series of lab kind of experiments with some specific artistic uh, participants. And so the Digital Creators Lab um, participants, some of them are here. If you wanted to uh, un show your, uh, uh, start your video and just, if you just wanted to say hi and wave, uh, we have Luke Reese, 
maybe Luke will wave. Katie Reddy Walters, who I don't think is here today. Um, we have Nantanka Bazaar, which is Himanshu Sitlani and Neha Potaville, as well as Theater to Play, all the way from Prague, which is Carmen Lee and Roland Au. So they'll be our participants as we do some even deeper diving exploration and kind of really figure out what's the best kind of technology and, and things for us to kind of provide. What, does, what do artists want from this space? It's your space in, in, in fact. So we're so excited to have them um, as dramaturges through this process and facilitators will be Indrid and myself, as well as Jess Watkins, who's a disability uh, dramaturg and will be amazing kind of have these conversations all together. Um, that's our kind of our lab in, in, in terms of moving forward. This is the second of the workshops, as Rinchen, uh, our producer, has mentioned. Uh, this is just the first in a series. We'll have a different series of workshops uh, when their experiments are complete, and we'll be sharing that. And we'll have a different set of workshops um, when we have the equipment uh, all in our in in the backspace and when that's all ordered. If you are wanting to look to consult um, in terms of some of the equipment and that we're looking at and we're looking to purchase, we will be present at the PXR conference and doing some consultation in terms of uh, any kind of extended reality works that people are doing um, that will be present at that conference to to kind of have a consultation as well. Uh, so that's the project. Today, today we have, we're so, 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 so lucky. Um, how lucky are we? We're so, 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 so lucky to have um, Sammy Chen and the Chimeric Collective present to us. And, you know, one of the reasons that um, I wanted Chimeric as part of, as part of this project and part of uh, the digital advisors for this project is, is, is really just how um, how creative they are, frankly. Uh, how creative as a group that they the, the manner they work and the manner of their approach that uh, their dramaturgical approach to aesthetic and how they use technology is always driven by by metaphor, by meaning, by story, and, and by extraordinary visuals. Um, there's just such exciting, exciting work. Um, I think I'll hand it over to Sammy. I think we're going to put put the bios in the in the chat for you, so that I'm not reading things that are available to you. Um, I'd love to hand it over to Sammy, my dear friend Sammy. Thank you, Madre. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, TPM, for having me. Uh, my name is Sammy. Um, I am an Asian feminine queer man in the 30s uh, with long dark hair. I'm wearing a white t-shirt with a necklace from my Buddhist teacher and there's white walls behind me. Um, I maybe should show a little bit about the space we're in right now. Uh, I'm, we're in the middle of a residency uh, at, in Moro. Uh, it's a sojourn residency uh, hosted by Dumb Instrument. So thank you to Jin Kuang for having us. Um, to be able to actually integrate uh, this residency based space uh, with the showing and the talk together. Uh, we have Karan McCall, it's a little backlit here and here, and Shanghai, my brother, and then this photographer is Shen Ho, uh, my dad, uh, Jackson Chen, who will be doing light painting there, and there's uh, Zhang Jingjie, who's boarding the residency, and my mom here <laughs> as well. So my whole family is in the space holding holding it down uh, together um, and uh, we are here super grateful um, to be streaming um, live connecting virtually from the land um, of the unceded territories of the coast Salish people um, particularly the squamish the musqueam and the solid tooth people and it's currently known as Vancouver. Uh, we are currently in the downtown neighborhood, the knowledge and the social political climate is happening in Vancouver. Uh, and really grateful to be here to share some love and creativity. And I, just reading my notes here, make sure I didn't miss anybody. Okay. So I would like to, I'm, I'm super excited about this collaboration here. Um, I may be over 
Um, I, I basically have so much material, you know. We've been doing this, like, we've been doing over probably three, four hundred projects, right, in doing interdisciplinary work. And then often I think about being the present, what, what do I want to do, what do I want to share uh, with the audience here and now, and trying to balance work life, you know, trying to reuse material. Um, and then I was thinking, okay, what do I want to do in here? I want to actually um, show something that's current, I know those, those, those of you who already seen the description online, um, if it doesn't fit exactly to what you're looking for, we do have a talk that's ready uh, uploaded online. So if you feel like it's not enough for you, there is this whole hour of talk that I've been doing about spirituality, uh, this interdisciplinary journey, working in new media. But what we're gonna do today, actually, I, threw, I tossed most of the things, 80% of the material out and prepared a whole new material here today. Uh, so I just want us to all feel the excitement of like, okay, it's new things, it's, it's current, it's happening right now, one middle of residency, okay, what can we share to the audience out there, to the things that we're working on currently? And so that's kind of uh, where we're at, and I would like to begin and to share in our process. So often we do um, the work, especially nowadays, um, we really like to center our own ancestry, uh, where we are at in relationship to the cosmos, to, uh, to spirituality. So we've been diving quite deeply into spiritual practice. So the beginning rituals are very, very important and what just happened before, actually, I'm already feeling that, you know, the, the kind of a feeling of the earth that we just did, that's all really, really beautiful part of the work. So if y'all feel uh, ready, we, I'd like to invite you to do a small ritual with me. And I'm also inviting the people in the space with me to, uh, to join us virtually and physically. Take a moment to just tap into your own body. Soft focus, or you can close your eyes, whatever feels right for you. I'd like to take a moment to really, really tap in, go deep inside to our body. Anything that's vibrating, calling, anything that's loud or distracting, you can just let that, let it be and shake it out. Let, let the body do its own thing, let the mind do its own thing. Let it settle. At your own time, I invite you to take your hand, put on your heart. This is a little exercise my spiritual teacher from Taiwan and Stacey Lee has been sharing with us in our process. One of the simplest things to feel our heart beating with no intention no desire, just simply feel the heart beating, keeping us alive as human. My teacher says this is the quickest way to access this pure state of loving kindness. While we access this state of loving kindness inside our heart, you may start to feel your body shifts. This feeling frequency of gratitude may start to come in. The heart is not biased, it's neutral. It's keeping you alive, it's holding space for you, it's keeping this body together, running, Breathing. While you're accessing this pure state 
of loving kindness. I'd like to invite you to expand your awareness. This shift of frequency in the body. This really good feeling of being alive and being able to access this pure state of love and kindness to just expand this awareness out to your whole body. And then to the whole space, wherever you're at, your room, the whole building. You can expand out to the whole city, the whole Canada, if that's where you're at. Or North America, your whole continent expanding, expanding the whole earth, feeling the earth holding us, supporting us, the Mother Earth. Thank you, Mother Earth. And then we, we keep expanding to the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the galaxy that we're in to the galaxy that is unknown and to other dimensions that is also unknown or known. And take a moment to feel with that awareness, that expansion, to, to feel how our relationship of the self, this ego self that gives us the reason to live the, this whole filter of being human. This ego self like gives us to provide us this human experience and feeling how small that is and how beautiful that is at the same time in relationship to this whole cosmos and that we are a member of this universe while one part of this whole cosmos. With this awareness, I'd like you to slowly, slowly bring back to yourself. Feeling the body shift, feeling the cells in the body, the cells in our brain, the cells in the body, how they're working together to create this programming from the creator, how we navigate through the world, through vision, through sound, to taste through all the sensory that we have as our sensors. Acknowledging that my sound might not be the most hi-fi sound you can hear, like the birds, like someone whispering to you, but you have the capability to expand this limited data bandwidth from Zoom. You can fill in those information. Let the cells, the creative cell to activate, then the imaginative cell to activate. We take away whatever any preconceived notion of what reality is. Slowly, slowly think about what of the transformative possibility that we can have as artists. It can bring my presence, my energy to in front of you rather than just on the screen. Think of asking, inviting ourselves in the body, our brain to work with us activate the space around us. These interwebs of information can also be transmitted through vibration and magnetic field. So we are not purely seeing, we are not purely hearing. There are multitudes of sensory in our body that is still hidden. There's so much potentials that we can activate. Part of the pathway, the simplest pathway, is imagination. 
that we all acquire as a child when we were born? How do we invite imagination to come back so that the screen is not just a screen, the sound is not just sound. There's so much more to it, and there is always a dialogue between you and I. As artists or as healers, we're not really giving anything. We're sharing, imagining, inspiring the vibration or possibility, the kind of frequency that lets you feel inspired, that activates those sensory, those cells in the body. Then ima imagination comes in, images comes in, stories start to conjure. That's the work that you that belongs to you and while providing just a platform or just providing certain limited of data just like what's happening here but the rest of the job is up to you how you take those data decode them into your own moving and beautiful soul-searching story when you at your own time, when you're ready, feel free to open your eyes. And just feel the space again, feel the sound around you, the magnetic feel around you. And as I ask, like, what is the reality? And what kind of reality do you want to create? What kind of world do you want to manifest? And this is one of the work that I've been centering on. It's working with vibration, working with quantum physics, working with the cortisols in the body, the hormones in the body, the cells in the body, as artists to really activate, finding different pathway to activate imagination, to find new ways of storytelling. Because deep down, everything is all connected, and we're just searching for those pathways to get it to conjure, to connect. I hope you enjoyed the ritual and thank you for uh, being on this journey with me. Um, I'm really grateful and you can feel the gratitude manifest the reality and the more grateful we are, the, the more fun and more joy we can bring into this event as well because, you know, as a, as a collective, we kind of, we conjure energy together even across the, uh, the globe, right? Yeah. So after this ritual, I would like to um, go into some of the ex uh, exciting for me, <laughs> some new material I'd like to share. Um, okay. And more material. Yes, I'm going to quickly space to my artist. Yes. So the first thing I'd like to share is a brand new mini documentary film that uh, a, a director from Shanghai named Daniel Shi has made um, recently. And this, I would say this is a, will be a premiere because I haven't shown anyone yet. It just freshly came out of the oven. So I'm excited to share this documentary, mini documentary film, just a few minutes. Um, I am going to be speaking my mother tongue in this documentary film. So I'm excited about that. And my apologies in advance that the English subtitle is a little bit fast. So uh, it will we'll make it available online if you want to rewatch any part of it. Um, yeah, and I think it really captures the essence of my work. So I just like to share that. Okay, here we go. Recently, 
最近做了一个梦，然后那个梦是我十年前的梦，我梦到在。Okay, let me see what is going on with the Zoom. So I, my video, ah, this is why. Virtual webcam, there we go. Sorry about that, it didn't switch to the right channel. Now, here we go.我最近做了一个梦，然后那个梦是我十年前的梦。我梦到在树林当中，对我看到很多的树明明在表面上面完全就是分开的嘛，它就是不同的地方这样子，但它的根其实连在一起的。但我们看不到，然后在根在下面，
commission everyone to make a video uh, to do it. And some people are too shy, some people are touring, so we select about, I think, five artists to, to share their work. So yeah, I'm really like to uh, share that. And uh, just a little uh, preface, Marjorie's piece, there is a little snippet of um, Marjorie's piece in there. I guess we'll, uh, we'll find out where that happens. Okay, let's enjoy. Hello, my name is Carolyn McCall. I'm a Vancouver-based interdisciplinary artist who lives, works, and plays on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, including the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Through the amalgamation of experimental movement, video, new media, and technology, my practice questions, experiments, and converges ideas between different mediums to rediscover how they can cohesively coalesce. One of the projects I want to share today is 003 Playback. It's currently going into its second phase of development. The piece originally existed as a solo work, but we will be transforming it into a group exploration over the next phase. These artists come from a variety of different backgrounds and I'm so excited to dive into the research with them. Here is an excerpt from the original work in progress showing a live stream and vote for either A or B to participate. This is an example of how you will be participating in the performance. You will have 30 seconds to make your decision between two options. Vote for what you want to see and we will use the prompt with the most votes to manipulate the phrase in real time. Please note that all participants are encouraged to engage with every poll. We also encourage participation in the chat as it can affect other aspects of the piece. Good evening, capital A. So excited. Lock the reverb. Result is a. A little bit about the project. Centered around digital technology looping and real-time manipulation, 003 Playback is a participatory movement exploration. In the work, the audience votes on the sound, lighting, and how the movement will be altered. The performer then kinesthetically responds to these uh, real-time yeah, choices made by the there. online participants via visual Do you feedback. want one in here? Drawing from video it's games and door. simulation technology, yes. this interactive piece explores surveillance, control, dismemberment, and agency. The original impetus for this piece began by bridging my past explorations with kinesthetic response, computer-generated decision-making, and interactive installation performance work with the need to respond to our current pandemic restrictions for performance art. This compelled me to question how we can use the COVID-19 restrictions as a choreographic obstruction and inspiration to expand beyond the traditional stage. This recent paradigm shift in live performance creates a new motive for the exploration of high resolution camera feeds, live rendering, interactive components, and their contextual relationship with traditional stage elements. The practical bridging of these new technologies and traditional components will continue the evolution of how we engage with live performance, both online and in person. Some of the other projects that I'm currently working on with Chimeric are We Were One. We Were One is a movement and new media research project investigating human connections and potentials through ancestral rituals, energetic practice, channeling, and somatic sensation research. The project is co-created with Semi Chan and myself. I also am working on Ritual Spective, which is this project today that you will be seeing some excerpts of our research so far. Some of my recent interests and explorations have been with 360 video and VR elements, as well as various softwares, including Touch Designer, Blender, and Isadora. Hello, my name is Ivan, and I'm one of the graphic artists at Shimeric. Uh, so I mainly work with 2D animations, but I occasionally also edit photos and also create digital drawings as well. Um, so the tools really depend on wh what the project I'm given. Uh, for example, one of the first projects that I worked on was The Great Leap. Um, that was at the Arts Club. Um, so I used After Effects to create animations, but I also used Photoshop to uh, edit some photos for that play. 
Um, so it really depends on the project. Um, while another project that I worked on, um, it really just needed uh, digital drawings um, that are still, so no animation applied. So it is really common um, when working with this team that we mix our medias and different programs together. For example, I may use After Effects to create an animation that focuses on the motion, while another person may take that original file and add special effects and different layers on top of that. Although the projects are very rich in opportunities to practice your own art and also to explore different mediums, it's also a great place to learn about culture and um, history as well. The projects that I've worked on so far have been around topics such as social injustices, um, especially um, racial injustices and colonialism as well, but these are definitely not topics that are limited as well. As a Chinese Canadian, being a part of uh, projects that have so much meaning and having such a powerful narrative is definitely something to be proud of, especially when it's finally shown in a space like a theater. Thank you. My name is Konu. I graduated in SFU with Bachelor of Fine Art in Music. I joined Shimeric since 2019 and I have been um, their music composer ever since. Uh, before I joined Shimeric, I used to make music that is more entertainment niche. But then after I joined Shimeric, uh, I started making music that that make you feel like you're in another world, another dimension. The projects that I participated in were Nelkin Line, Cross Mountain and Sea, Weave 2.0, Form 2020, Form 2021, Retrospective. I use Logic Pro X for most of my work. Uh, when I make music, I first listen to the samples and those samples will get sent by Sammy most of the time and I listen through them and I mark the time where uh, interesting sound occur and I remember that part and then when I import the audio into the Logic Pro I slice them where that um, sound occur and then I stack layers of them but when I make layers I tend not to um, layer them a lot because I like to keep my audio simple and clean. Uh, what I find most interesting thing about working with sample is when I work with samples, I can recreate the sound that's already like kind of like an end product. And it's very interesting because kind of tells me that when I finish making music, that's not the end product. Like you can always like recreate them like over and over again. And that for me, like, like teaches me that the creation is limitless. Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm the current SFU intern at Chimeric. I double major in art performance and cinema studies as well as archaeology. My current job at Chimeric is to assist with social media posting as well as any upcoming new projects. In the last month, I uh, participated helping with Kristen A. Marie's Love to See exhibition, which Sammy had an interactive new media art piece in. I am also an interdisciplinary artist on my own, and currently I mostly work with dance, uh, video, editing, and other new media art forms. My background is in visual arts, so when I create new works, I draw a lot of inspiration from visual art compositions, as well as film theory, and also a lot of art history. So when I critique other people's works or when I create my own, I try to be something more of a story rather than just a piece of um, information that I'm putting out there. I am also the executive of a dance team called Penryberry SFU. Uh, we make a lot of videos, street busking dances, as well as K-pop covers and other small film projects. It's very interesting to work with entire team of members and I feel really glad that um, 
we've been working together well for over three years. Hi everybody, my name is Nancy Lee. I'm a interdisciplinary media artist. I'm also an event producer, a DJ, and a cultural producer. Uh, so I am the co-founder for Current Feminist Electronic Arts Symposium. With some of my early media artworks um, was first done in collaboration with Kieran Bumper. So this is Pendula. It's an interactive um, swing installation where uh, the movement of the swing uh, controls the audio-visual uh, parameters um, that is projected onto the walls and in the space. So for this project, um, we use Arduino um, to capture the gyroscope and accelerometer data and sent it to Maximus P. Uh, and then uh, Maximus P then sends OSC messages out to kind of control digital parameters. This piece is called Tidal Traces. It's a 360 a VR dance film. Um, it was done in uh, collaboration with Emelina Fredrickson. Um, for this piece, it was kind of the first of its time. We did it in 2017. It's done with 16 uh, GoPros. It's called the GoPro um, Odyssey rig. Uh, so it's actually stereoscopic. So when you watch it in a VR headset, um, the left eye and the right eye are different. So you actually have a depth perception. So this piece was produced by uh, the National Film Board of Canada. This next piece is called Telepresence, done in 2018. It's uh, me and Kieran's uh, collaboration again, and this is a collective VR um, 8.2 channel live performance kind of setting. So essentially, we had eight speakers all around, um, and we had JP Carter on the trumpet playing like live improvisational performance, and everybody uh, had their VR headset network together, so they all saw the same visuals. So they can kind of collectively in VR witness this like live concert together, as we know how important it is to have this like live collective uh, viewing experience, just because we felt a lot of VR viewing experiences were very individualized, and we wanted to kind of explore the social aspects of how we can all be in a space, but also view a VR piece at the same time. This piece was supported by the Western Front and Emily Carr. I'm also a music video uh, director, it kind of bridges my interest because, uh, you know, as a DJ, I'm interested in music. I'm also a dance film maker, so this kind of helps me bridge the interest. I work with dancers uh, such as Immigrant Lessons. You see this video. This video is a music video for I Am Who Are for their song Swirl. We did this in 2017. This is a music video for Potato Head People featuring Bunny for their song Single Live. As you can see again, I'm working with some dancers from Immigrant Lessons. You know, I love art direction, I love styling. So a big part of, you know, creating music videos is kind of exploring with like uh, styling and like magical realism and also making performers who don't usually perform on screen, you know, feel good about themselves and feel sexy enough to kind of perform their alter ego because a lot of musicians have this like other alter ego that they want to showcase through their music. This piece is done in collaboration with Simran Sachar and Kieran Bumper also on the sound. So this is done through volumetric video filmmaking. It's another technology that I'm often kind of exploring using game engines. This technology allows you to put things through game engines and uh, explore things through like a 3D space. So my final project and most recent, like biggest project that I've done is called Union. It's a speculative science fiction um, solo exhibition that I did with Kieran Bumber. So as you see here, this is a trailer for our two channel film. Um, the story of this is essentially set in year 3000 in a post-apocalyptic context where Kieran and I find each other to get married and have like a traditional ritualistic wedding in order for us to discover our ancestral memories through the practice of ritual and intimacy and touch. So for this exhibition, you know, we had like a 3D printed sculpture with a two channel film um, beside it. And we also had the wedding dresses that was made by Adam Lynn Bungay. And then also a 16 channel sound interactive audio visual installation done in collaboration with Alexander Zekovich and also Sami Chen. Participants become part of the world and become uh, interact with uh, the projection in the space as a member of the human world.
Hello, I'm Nita Bowerman. I'm a multidisciplinary performance and new media artist, crafting creative experiments on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil First Nations, also colonially known as Vancouver, BC. It is my humble pleasure to have had Sammy Chen here on these Coast Salish lands as a mentor and teacher and to subsequently be invited to work and play with Chimeric Collective. Often when I'm engaging with my personal practice, I don't know what I'm going to create. It takes form as I work and play. The medium of expression I've used the longest is embodied. It lives and breathes in my flesh, my muscles, my bones, and my voice. I've always been drawn to the abstract abstract movement and gestures, abstract vocal expressions. I guess I've been in search of ways to reveal unspeakables, both dark and light. Although I came to art making through theater, I've always been drawn to digital art forms, but found the technologies inaccessible until I was gifted a used iPhone from a friend who was upgrading. Not being much of a phone conversationalist, I gravitated toward photography and video and iOS editing apps. Since then, apps for recording, editing, live visual and audio effects, AI body mapping, 3D imaging, and music production have come a long way. A lot of my personal practice is still rooted in the body abstracted, and it is often created entirely on portable devices with iOS editing capabilities. Lately, I've also become inquisitive about web-based AI image generation and manipulation. I had the privilege to receive mentorship funded by the BC Arts Council from Sami. He provided me with a crash course in Isadora, the software he uses to craft his exquisite works of art. He also shared his knowledge about media arts best practices and provided encouragement and inspiration to continue exploring digital forms of expression. I'm an artist with a rather limited capacity for technical specialization. I take accessible to me digital tools and bash them together to see what can be birthed. Working with Chimeric has gifted me the opportunity to work and play in a variety of contexts, from projection design for live theater and dance, to VJing live visuals for concerts, to free associative image generation for audiovisual projects intended for the screen. Some highlights of my work with Chimeric include solidification and RT, for which I provided abstract imagery that was then woven into visual magic by Once Sammy. Once you move through cold, there is Pacific. Once you move through Pacific, there is Placid. Once you move through Placid, there is a condition of expanse. And it was in that condition of expanse that held me. I heard them singing above me. Mashkawaje fell through the ice to find quiet, to get out of the wind, to visit with Namegos. They all sang. Mashkawaje stitches up the hole. They are so cold. I am humbly honored and deeply grateful for the creative inspiration I've received engaging with Chimeric's work. Whether it be as an audience member, as a fellow artist, or as a collaborator, I am always thrilled to discover what magic 
turmeric will conjure next. Thank you everyone for watching the new uh, turmeric artist sharing reel and uh, I hope you're finding it exciting to uh, if any one of the, any of the artists are interested in working with you know you can let let us know too you know I'm just like really like to open out the space to uh, to share our creative inspiration with everyone as well and um, uh, one of the co-founder of Chimeric, um who's my brother Shanghai he's in space right now he's too busy and too shy to talk about his work so I like to share some of the stuff we've been doing the last 10 years um, especially working with uh, taking arts and technology into more somewhat relatively commercial kind of application, so not just within uh, dance and theater. So just show some of the possibility that uh, you can apply uh, to this kind of art to uh, different formats. In case you're wondering, this is all in Taiwan. This two pieces. This is a commercial for LED company. And this is a very cheesy music video for a celebrity, a pop star. We just did the projection. So. Interacting installation, collaboration on comic drawing. So I was also thinking, uh, Chimera is kind of known for uh, doing the theater design, right? So some people are probably saying that where are all the theater, uh, you know, projection design kind of stuff. So I uh, just quickly, super quickly compile some of the works that deal with larger uh, theater kind of format, uh, new media and projection design. And please enjoy as well. Hello, welcome to Inheritance. Everything in the past is already set, but you determine the future. Every so often, the story will come to a choice point. Then the performance will resume according to which choice received the most votes. Something's wrong. There's no way my dad's just letting this guy stay here. I'm sure you know that this land here is officially recognized, even by your own government, as the traditional territory of my people. Do you know what the word unseated means? 
meaning never formally surrendered, no treaties, nothing. The schools alone, hundreds of millions for a bunch of healing projects, Those numbers not pale to mention huge payouts from industry, all paid for by taxpayers like me and oh. my dad. You should know that the law is on my side no matter what. Okay. Abby! You do this and you'll never see your dad again. Abby, this is our future. Please. Choice point. A. Should Frank get his way and they untie him? B. Should Noah and Abby go call this in? C. Should they leave Frank tied up and search for the deed themselves? You have 15 seconds. You've chosen B. Bring it up right now. You chose A. You've chosen B. You chose C. On May 7, 1989, an article ran in the San Francisco Chronicle regarding a supposed rematch between Beijing University and USF to take place in China in one month's time. I'm playing this game. Beijing University versus USF? I'm leaving tomorrow. No, you are not. They already bought my plane ticket. So there might be a lot of um, questions around how do we adapt um, performance live art into virtual uh, online kind of environment. So I would like to just share a little bit on some of the research we've been doing on this virtual live art project um, and uh, to show how we've been researching behind how to use the available technology uh, to kind of intersect them, integrate them into ways that make it more accessible um, for, for us to utilize more available technology to actually create um, and perform live art in the way that it's online and virtual and accessible. So I would just like to share a quick example here. This next piece I'd like to share is some of the possibilities how we can still create live performances virtually online from different locations. So this is a virtual remote performance experiment that um, ADC Associate Design of Canada has invited four artists, including myself, a lighting designer, a VR slash production designer, and a musician to kind of spend 10 hours together to collaborate together on something. 
using the right the the rule is that using the available technology you know that we have right now to create and um, so we're using the teleconference technology such as Zoom, Skype to integrate with new media software Isadora to allow performers from different locations to create live performance to online together. And here I'm going to show you a bit of a behind the scene how I'm working with the artists online remotely and how I program in Isadora to integrate Zoom and Skype to do live video mixing and live video design in real time. So everything has to be done live. That's kind of the rule. And I'll share some of the excerpt here of the live experiment that we perform for the audience online. So now we are in the current project now. We're getting the meat of the thing here, retrospective. Um, it's a project that we are going to show uh, a little bit of the behind the scene process that we have. Um, but before that, I'd just like to share a little bit um, about the context of the project and, um, and, and then also the first phase that we did in earlier this year. Uh, uh, this production and research uh, around intergenerational dialogue with my father and um, I was thinking around how do we do a ritual to uh, introspect and bring a different perspective on what is a dialogue around different generations and to the now and how do we open this kind of dialogue to things that we don't really talk about with our families and to actually create um, a relevant to to what is happening here and now in our generations. During the time when I started this project, uh, COVID hit. And then, um, so I spent quite a bit of time with my, my family, actually being able to um, create that space for dialogue, uh, rather than just keep working 
uh, working and working on production all the time and forgetting the, some of the meaning that we actually are here for. And um, I have adapted to the show to be an online exhibition. So I'm experimenting on how, if you are not in person, you know, um, how do we actually um, still be able to share our work uh, in the virtual space? <laughs> So that's my mom moving this space. You can see the depends on which direction you move, you will you can scroll the painting through the movement. Thank you. So I think this is a great time if we can take seven minute break and then we are gonna reconfigure the space to uh, to do a little bit of a work in progress sharing and live demo for y'all. Okay, so we'll be back in seven minutes. Thank you.
Okay, I think we are ready for this little show live demo work in progress for retrospective 0 0.3 streaming from Moro in Vancouver. Okay, so we're gonna start with a little bit of music. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you everyone. I am just going to quickly reset. Ooh. Can y'all still hear me? Okay, quickly reset here. Okay, well, back. Yeah, so I am um, done here for the showing part. And uh, thanks everyone in the team here uh, for doing this uh, live demo, working progress with us. And uh, since we have about 22 minutes left, um, yeah, I think if Marjorie or anyone wants to, from TPN wants to, uh, take over, uh, we're happy to uh, hear some feedback or any questions, any thoughts, any reflection, any feelings that you get out of it. Uh, you know, we only spend about five days in the, in the space to kind of experimenting uh, this, this idea with my father and with my family here, my uh, twin, twin soul, Caroline McCall. And uh, there is uh, lots of people who have contributed to uh, this research uh, process from the phase one, phase two. But we're doing a mini version on phase three right now. So it's a very short process and uh, uh, it's quite vulnerable. And we just kind of experimented and shared some of the things that we thought, hey, we could um, share a bit and see anything comes out of it. Uh, because everyone has a different experience. We often like to hear what people's thoughts are and what, you know, what gelled with them. Um, so you can help us to uh, move forward uh, with the project. Any question too, we're happy to answer about previous uh, presentation that we've been, we, we show there's lots of material. So I think it's just a space for y'all to, uh, you know, to pick my brain as much as you want. First, Sammy, I just wanna say thank you so much for sharing and for sharing the work of the collective. I think I was aware a lot of your personal work and personal work that I've seen that through through some of the theater world, but not the breadth of the work of your collective. So just to just to say, I hope you know for everyone here. I hope that was as inspiring for you as for um, myself. I have a bazillion questions, um, but Indra, did you want to say anything as well? I just want to say, I mean, I. It's, it's so beautifully overwhelming. I, I, um, I, I, yeah, you know, I don't even know where to begin. I'm not sure where people are at as well. It's just incredible work, Sammy, and um, and also the rest of the team as well. Um, so congrats. And I think uh, also I, I, I just loved that you, and that's something that maybe, maybe we can begin with my question while people are still thinking of a question, but I just love that you started from this place of unearthing or uh, un, or accessing imagination, you know? And uh, it's such a beautiful way to start because often I think work with technology or digital work or, you know, often I find, like I often say, and I mean this in the best way that sometimes what Canadian theater suffers from is a mentality of feeling poor. You know, we feel like poor, like deep down. And so we can't, sometimes we can't access, we forget that we need to access our imagination and that our imagination is very rich and very, very, uh, you know, large. And so I just want, I just, I was wondering if you want to talk a little bit more about that, like that that's how you approach your work, that that's where it comes from, it unearths from that place, not necessarily from like getting too wrapped up in all of these, you know, uh, um, different ways of approaching work uh, from technological, uh, technological perspective. Well, thank you. That's a very profound question. And yeah, wow, that many, many layers to that. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I think what sparked me of what you said about the scarcity mindset that we all are kind of, uh, you know, imposed upon to in this colonial kind of construction of the world, thinking that we have to 
do X, Y, Z in order to survive, you know, but the survival uh, kind of hormone is not the same as creation hormone, right? So if you're constantly in survival mode, you're actually not creating, right? So that's the thing I'm still navigating after, you know, working professionally after 12, uh, 13 years, right? Uh, it's how to really find that balance of um, trusting and believing and having faith into the work that you do, you know, as artists, as creators, you know, and, and I think understanding that first we got to respect our profession, you know, as artists, this is what we do, you know, and that we are the expert of inspiring people, we are the expert exercising those muscles of understanding how the imagination works in the body and how to elicit and evoke imagination for other people, right? We are the expert in this field because we just do it all the time, that's our job, right? And then, but then the scarcity mindset comes in, it's like, oh, if you're artists, you're poor, you know, like you can, you know, I have like many ex-lovers who, who their parents were like, oh, you have to dump Sammy because uh, they, they, he's not going to make money, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, I mean, I'm doing okay right now, you know, just got to trust and believe that there is something for everybody. Like we all have mm -hmm. our role when we were born and like this soul traveled to earth, you know, we, we signed some kind of contract with the universe. We're here for something, right? And mm -hmm. there is always some great power, the greatest power that only you can do in this society that we agree to together, having this human experience, right? So there's no such thing as scarcity because, you know, it just means that it's not the right fit. It's not in the alignment of what you do and it's okay to shift, right? So if you're resisting to that feeling of like, oh, it's not the right time to write things down in alignment, that means, you know, it just got opened up again, right? That's why we watch shows is to like, to constantly be inspired, opening doors, exercising those muscles and brains like, oh, I used to think of the world this way, but now these people are thinking the world this way. Oh, I never thought about that, right? Like how do you rewire the brain from watching our feeling our pieces, feeling the magnetic feel that everybody does, you know, in, in really did a good job in the beginning acknowledging that and the earth, you know, I, I immediately felt the, the kind of rewiring, uh, recalibration that happens in the body and spirit as well. So yeah, that really comes from, with the mindset, you know, when I create things, like with this project there is, you know, we, we're not spending a lot of money. It's, we have a space kind of lined up for us. Um, and then somebody uh, named uh, Jin Kwan, who's a Vancouver-based uh, choreographer, who really likes my dad's work. So, so then she applied for residency for my dad to create for a week. And then I was like, oh, we have this research project. Let's do it together. And then there are people who are available to kind of join us. And this process has been really, really great. It, again, it's finding the alignment of what, how things flow and be constant in the flow. And when the resistance comes, you know, just a knowledge that happens and then make a shift as happens. I know it's not easy, it's easier to say than do, but that's the beauty of the journey, right? Is to really mm -hmm. do that. And that's sometimes the most beautiful thing come out of that, those resistance and mistakes too, right? That we make, yeah. So yeah, I think that's, yeah, I love that question. Thank you, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, Beautifully articulated. Oh, sorry, everyone's here now. So, uh, someone went to uh, Washington, so I just want to really acknowledge the team here. Uh, Co-creator, Karan McCall, who's my twin flame. And uh, Shanghai, my brother, who Marjorie worked with on China Doll as well, is <laughs> here. Uh, we have some audience, old old friend Jimmy and Eve, you know, and Jinji in the back, and uh, Shen here, uh, supporting us, holding space, and of course the the big star here, the <laughs> the father, <laughs> who everything came from, <laughs> and my mother. So my source of inspiration, and I guess the creative DNA comes from these two, and they were doing live. So you were able to see on the other camera, they everything was done live, and we're trying a different way. Um, and um, oh, one thing I didn't mention was the. This little thing that just happened is a dream that I had 10 years ago. I, w I wanted to do something. The first time when I encountered Isadora and, and, and just entering into digital performance, I, I was like, oh my God, I can do all this stuff with this software. And then I was like, dad, maybe we can, at some point, when the right time comes, I want to have you do light painting. And I want my brother, Sean, to do like some media art together. And I want to be able to jam out something to get the life and with no, like, no language barrier and nothing else, you know, just, just jam together. And this is the moment, like it actually happened. I was like, that's the little thought I was seated 10 years ago. And now it's like, okay, it finally blossomed, right? So yeah, I just want to share that. So beautiful, Sammy. Thank you so much for sharing that piece in progress. It's so extraordinary to see that 
relationship between the dance and between between your father's painting it's so incredible i just want to just touch back we do have a couple of questions in the chat but i just wanted to touch back on a couple of things that you said that first of all i'm really struck like by the breadth of kind of tools that uh, are available and around and, and 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 the creative means in which they're used and so what you're speaking to uh, kind of the alignment that that's part of my question is like how in the aesthetic do you figure out with so many tools what is the right tool how does that how does that happen and 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 you know how do you not be overwhelmed i think beautifully overwhelmed and kind of choice as well so that's one part of my question but i just wanted to have a little comment i was also really inspired partly about this conversation about um artistic um a resource scarcity um i missed her name um, but the artist who who started on 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 apps and and, and through through ios devices and, and continue to do so much work through portable devices uh, that was also really inspiring to hear her speak to that and to speak to kind and seeing the kind of work that she was doing through the apps and so i just wanted to say that out loud as well that in that mentorship like you know she you were mentoring her but i found that personally inspiring especially maybe for some of the people in, in in this group here that are starting out and kind of how to explore that there's really accessible ways that are literally in your pocket um of exploring but um to that and but then just back to the question when you have so many tools and when when your world kind of holds those tools and and the artist artistry and creativity available to you how do you know what it, the right um what the right kind of tool is and what where do you find that alignment how do you find the right aesthetic um for communicating a particular piece such a good question oh my god yeah um I, it's funny because i i was mentoring caroline for a while as well and uh, it's like showing like Isadora and other software. And then she just took off really fast and doing all this amazing project. And now she's doing uh, working on Blender and uh, Tailbrush and doing like VR stuff right now too. And then sometimes she'll call me like, oh my God, I'm, I'm doing like midnight. I, I can't sleep. I'm going to look at tutorials. And then like, I'm overwhelmed with all this stuff that's happening. Uh, and then like, how do you keep up, right? Because you know, we, we do go through the time where it was rapid information coming in and just so many learning opportunities to a point you're always feeling behind. Like, like oh, everyone's ahead and there's so many things happening. Oh, what do I learn, right? Like, that's, uh, I think that's also coming, that, that's forever an ongoing question for me as well. I, I felt that way in the beginning, the first time when I, like, encounter like, new media technology, right? And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm a thousand miles behind. I'm, I'm 10 years behind people now, you know? And then when I encountered Isadora again, that's the software that really, really felt like alignment with me, with my soul, my creative soul. It just, I, I, it speaks a language as my language. So at some point there will be a click in you, I think, you know, I believe in that the technology is here to serve for us, you know, that we, we are inventing together to have this kind of vehicle to help us support where we want to get to, right? So it's a collaboration between technology. So if certain things don't work for you, you know, it's it's like it's, well, our, our brain may wire differently than the creator of the software. I know um, Mark Klingel, who's the creator of uh, Isadora, very, very well. And I realized we have similar brain. We think similarly. And the, the brain of or the vibration of the creator of software actually transmitted through, it's encoded and built in the software itself. So uh, there is a lot, if you go on my YouTube, there is a lot of, I, I talk about story of like, like really, really magical story of like things uh, that if I have a bad thought, sometimes the, the show will crash. If I were coming with a toxic mindset, the, the software might not like it. So you just gotta bring like kindness and a good vibration into the software. That's, not, that's why I also do the ritual is to acknowledge that, you know, uh, the technology is also a body as well. They are not just a thing, right? They're not just a virtually somewhere else that's invisible and abstract, right? It's actually a body holding some kind of information uh, that from the creator himself, you know, so it's transmitting through that. So, um, yeah, and then I guess I, to answer that is like, once you find something in alignment with you, you will feel it. If you feel that click, it's kind of dating, right? You just know that sometimes the couple, first couple of days doesn't go well, and then the third one, you're like, yes, that's the right person, you know? And that might go on a journey with you, and they might some, find something else, you know? Uh, again, it's, the technology is there to collaborate and support what we do. 
And um, so when you find that you kind of click, and Marjorie, you, you, you say something about really um, touching for me to hear that about Nita Bowerman, uh, who it was a very moving process for me to work with her because lo lots of you don't know, like I actually don't have a dance background. I don't have dance training myself, right? So for me to be on stage performing, using my body is very vulnerable. But I'm, I am just really lucky to be surrounded with people with so, like dance artists with such a beautiful and creative mindset that holds space for this body to share its creativity. So, and often I have choreographers saying that, oh my God, the way you move is so interesting. Like nobody moves that way because you don't have the training. That's why you, you are not kind of bounded, limited by a certain kind of range of movement, right? Um, you're able to come up with something that, you know, isn't being institutionalized. So I see that about a lot of media artists too, especially in media. When I met her, I was like, oh my God, she's like, you know, she's older than me, a, a female, you know? So there is that already the, you know, lots of breakthrough in terms of social political context, like how you know, not, not, you know, the female are not being held space as well to encourage to work in the tech you know, industry, right? So when I see her doing media work, it's kind of like the choreographer seeming dense. I really, I was like, oh my God, you're doing stuff that new media artists don't do. Media artists and filmmakers, we don't do that kind of stuff. You, you just found a way to hack into things to make things work because you feel like, because your intuition tells you. And those new pathway, to me, are so exciting. So every time I see her, when I pass on something to her, when I teach her something, she will do things that I'm like, oh, never thought about that. Wow, that's th that's amazing. She's like, oh, is there a right way and wrong way to do it? And I'm like, no, that's like your way is the best way, right? So yeah. uh, so thank you for mentioning that. It was uh, something that we, I, you know, years ago I felt I was like, wow, that's. That, that's it, you know, you just gotta be open to things, you know, and, and there's that, that limitation crumbles when you actually can open up to, to that new space, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. I think that, you know, just to really lean into the idea that the, the journey will be there, that, that you're, there isn't a kind of thing that's right or wrong, but that there, but be giving the space for that and being open to that will lead you in the right direction and lead you with the right choices. There are some questions. Should we delve into that a little bit? It's like six minutes left. <laughs> um, but Jackson, I think, had a question. And the question is, is the color inversion of the projection inherent to that technology or was it a choice to show it that way? I think, Jackson, if you're still here, do you want to maybe come on audio oh. a bit and uh father <laughs> so but my father doesn't speak english very well so i might have to translate so it was talking about inversion of the image was a choice that that um yeah actually kind of my brother and i made that choice so <laughs> so uh because of projection needs to be right right in order to show anything right so it, you have to think the mindset as in, everything has to be inverted Right. So why is our black on paper, really? So when you have a b white background with black ink, it doesn't quite look as well, as great, as uh, effective uh, if you invert uh, the image itself. Yeah. So that's kind of why for uh, for projection, right? So it becomes light. Uh, so then your your signal becomes the, the light itself, right? That's great. Yeah. I think there is somebody else named Jackson who is a part of the workshop who asked the question. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but it's great. Uh, I just want to give them a chance to maybe uh, clarify if, if we answered the question. Jackson, are you still here? Maybe. Oh, we did. Yes. Yeah. Thank great. you. Thank you, Jackson. Yeah. Thanks, Jackson. Good name. Okay. I think there's another question from Aaron. Marjorie? Giovanni. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Giovanni was here. He had to go, but he says hello, and oh, um, yeah. he had to go. Um, Aaron has a question. I don't know if Aaron, if you wanted to come online to ask you. Or sure. I can, can you hear me okay? We can. Yes. Welcome. Sorry, I'm having a few computer problems. First off, I love this. And Sammy, I don't care. You can marry me because I am so impressed with your work. Um, and my question <laughs> is, um, how are audiences reacting to this? Because I know when I'm trying to convince other groups to do things that are outside of the tradition, they resist. So I'd love to know how audiences are reacting to this beautiful work. 
I want to know too. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> What's your reaction? Give it to us. So um, maybe if anyone has any specific reactions to maybe the showing, this is a new showing of, of a work that Sammy is creating currently. So maybe that's kind of a, a question back out to the audience if other people had reflections on the piece. There are some already that um, are in the chat. So you're welcome to come online. I believe Veronique and um, Gwyneth also shared some, if you wanted to share some of your reflections. Um, sure, this is Veronique. I can just briefly share what I wrote. Uh, first of all, congrats. Hi, really good to see you. Yeah. Hey, uh, congrats to the Chimeric team. Uh, I was so moved by what you shared, all of it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I'm just going to pull up my comment because I articulated it better in writing than I will in speech right now. Um, that, uh, yeah, I was really moved and inspired by the use of different media to build intergenerational collaboration. I felt that it evoked the unspoken ways that experiences converge and diverge across different generations. And yeah, that, that's just what I wanted to share. Thank you. Veronique is also doing a project about uh, their um, Polish diaspora. Uh, it's, it's all intergenerational too. So look out for Veronique's work in the future too. It's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was, it's so, I, you know, the fact that it's intergenerational work, that is interdisciplinary work, you know, hearing now that you had a, you dreamt of this, this moment is, is incredibly moving. I, I will say this, it, it doesn't speak for me personally, but I would say that there's a lot of um, artists and, and maybe particularly people of color and, and, and maybe particularly even in the Asian diaspora that don't have the relationship with art and their parents in this way, that they're not able to have these, you know, sympathetic you know, simpatico kind of conversations about the work or uh, so to even to extend that, to be able to share the work in such an intense way, an intimate and beautiful way is, is extraordinary. So I echo that from Veronique. Um, and as well, there was also a reflection on the work um, from Gwyneth, and I don't know if you want to share that or I'm happy to read your chat. Um, this is from Gwyneth and she said it was essential to be able to see your father close up on camera and his relationship to you and Caroline. A journey from the macrocosm to the microcosm. Your father was creator and you and Carolyn were creation. Tears, 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 tears. <laughs> That's, those tears were my tears. Those tears were my tears. Just even reading that statement. I think it's an extraordinary, an extraordinary articulation of, of the piece. Um, I'm just aware we're at 4.59. Um, you know, if there's people that want to continue that conversation a little bit longer, we'll we'll stay online um, and we can. And so just, uh, but if you do need to go, we just do recognize that. Um, Indrid, if there's another question. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's other questions. So I think there's lots of gratitude and lots of thank yous and lots of uh, uh -huh. comments about being very inspired. It was truly a very inspiring uh, chat and uh, sharing. So I think can I quickly show something before I, before we? Yeah, of course. It's yeah. Like, it's, I, Caroline's like, Sammy, you made a rookie mistake. So I I was over prepared in the beginning. Uh, so I switched uh, to a different virtual camera. So in the beginning, I'll just show um, that it was supposed to, during the meditation session that we just did a ritual. We are supposed to go into here. So that's wow. uh, I want to share that so in case you know artists you are interested in learning this. You know, uh, we we go you know it's a way to kind of show uh, transformation of reality and come back, right? So that was uh, a kind of thing I was I was going to share in the beginning. So so I just wanted to just tell you that yeah, that's the little thing, uh, and then we come back. <laughs> I will just say just as we start to wrap up, Sammy, we didn't have that visualization, and yet we were still. In, we were still with you in the visualization. We were doing that own work ourselves. And that was what Indrit was referencing, that your ritual took us to that visualization, even though we didn't have it. So I'm just actually just like blown away. I'm going to go lie in a corner or something. Um, uh, uh, maybe I can be made a co-host just in case um, not everyone can be can stay online uh, any longer. So happy to put me as a co-host. Great, thank you. So uh, I'll stay on for a little bit if there's just a, another question that's wrapping up. Um, 
uh, Jackson just has one more question, which was, what was the name of the theater piece that was shown in the video before The Great Leap? This was, oh, I know- Inheritance. It, it is called Inheritance. It's by Ali Theater. And we are going to remount the piece, I think, online and film it in later this year or next year coming up. So we'll be, you'll hear about us if you follow us on Chimeric Collective, you know, on, on, on our G, on IG. Yay. <laughs> Beautiful. And I'll we'll also chase Sammy. Maybe we can we'll get all the names of the chimeric artists that were featured just so that we can share that information with everyone. I think it was going really fast. And so we'll want to want to know who they are. I think that's it for questions. Um, I'm just going to hand it back over to Rinchen, our DCL producer, just to wrap us up. Yes. Thank you so much, Sammy. And thank you so much to everybody here who was able to, uh, again, join us on this lovely Saturday afternoon. Uh, we do have one more workshop coming up on the 21st, which will be with, will be with our dramaturgs, uh, uh, Indrid Kasapi, Marjorie Chan, and Jess uh, Watkin. And so I'm just going to put that in the chat if you haven't signed up just yet, but it'll be on the 21st, which is next week. And uh, we'd love to have you join us again. Um, but yes, I thank you so much for everybody who stayed with us and who's engaged with the work. Sammy and your whole team, thank you again so much for sharing your stunning work. And, oh, I was gonna say, yeah. thank, you. thank you. Thank you, thank you, team. Um, thank you, parents. Yes. <laughs> Creators of Sammy. <laughs> so yes. Um, yeah, so please, yeah, if you haven't uh, signed up for the next workshop, please do so. Um, and make sure to also follow Chimeric and Sammy on Instagram. I, I believe actually the artists that were featured today were like they're they're actually tagged in their posts. Um, so that's also a great place to access their work and get in contact with them. Uh, but I wish you all a lovely rest of your Saturday. Um, we are going to hold the room for a few minutes if people do still want to finish up writing comments. Um, but yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thank Sammy. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. It's so great. Sammy, grateful. Sammy, so, so much gratitude. Thank, thank you, Marjorie, you. for the connection. It's because of you. <laughs> hey. Oh, and thank you so much to uh, Jordan and Joanne, who are our uh, interpreters today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.